Welcome to Smile Designer Pro. In this introductory video, we'll go through the basics of the app, covering the quickest workflow that lets you create a smile simulation for your patient in just a couple of minutes. In other videos, we'll cover more advanced tools and topics that allow you to take your treatment planning further and actually use the smile design you've created to drive a more predictable outcome. But for this quick start tutorial, we're going to cover the core functionality, which allows you or a member of your team to quickly design and simulate a case. It's so easy, you can do this for every single new patient exam as part of your standard process. This is the best way to really maximize the benefits of incorporating digital smile design in your practice. So let's get started. When you log into the app, the first thing you see is your case gallery. At first it'll be empty and you can start learning by downloading a sample case or if you're ready with your own patient you can dive right in and start a new case. Uh, there are other details about the case gallery and the cloud function specifically uh, that we'll cover in a separate video. For now we're going to dive right in and click on the new case button. The first thing we do with a new case is enter some basic information. So here I'll put quick start as the patient's name and I'm going to tap on this button where it says natural smile and I'm going to bring in the smiling face of the patient. Now Smile Designer Pro supports uh, a photo protocol that includes the retracted picture, the occlusal picture, 12 o'clock, and actually any arbitrary collection of pictures that you want to bring in and work with. Uh, but for this tutorial, we're going to keep everything simple and just use the, the smiling face. So we're going to click the next button. Now we're setting up the face. So in this face setup, um, the software has found features on the face automatically. So this is a feature that we call auto assist and it's available with a premium cloud subscription. And this helps you to first straighten the photo, uh, but also it tells Smile Designer where important landmarks on the face are. And that really helps the software to automate and accelerate uh, the workflow for you. So if you're not on a premium cloud plan, you'll have sort of a manual workflow to step through to define these features. Um, but with auto assist, this is completely automated. And we want to basically set up the midline where we want it. Um, you don't need to worry about getting these lines absolutely perfect. Um, the software just needs to know roughly where the eyes are, where the mouth is, where the jawline is. And if we want to tweak the proposed rotation of the face, we have these buttons on the bottom here and we can basically straighten the photo um, however we want, manually or using the slider. Once we're happy with that, we click the next button. And now we're in the editor and you see this auto assist animation where the software is actually coming up with an initial proposal for us of where the teeth could go. Um, of course, we're gonna adjust this and that's the first thing that I'm doing here. Uh, we have our proportion guide, which has some teeth already attached to it and we can adjust the midline as well um, and basically, we start adjusting the teeth by adjusting this golden proportion guide and it basically moves the teeth along with it to create that initial um, proposal. We're going to customize this of course um, but this sort of gets you very close in just a few seconds. Once we're happy with that and if we adjust the length of this by the way we're adjusting the proportion of the centrals. So. Once we're happy with it, we click on the check mark button. And what the check mark button here does is it locks the guide and unlocks the teeth so we can actually edit them one by one. So now the teeth are enabled for editing and I can actually select them individually and make changes. And if I wanna get rid of the proportion guide, I have a layer editor here on the right side of the screen and this always lets you toggle on and off different groups of content or layers um, in the design. So the guides layer, you see here, it says that it's locked. Now, if I click on it, it'll hide it. And if I click again, it'll bring it back unlocked. So basically there are three clicks to cycle through all the different states for this guides layer. In this case, I wanna basically hide it and work with the teeth from here. Um, it really gave me a pretty good proposal for this case, but maybe I want to customize it a little. So um, 
Maybe I'll just make the canine a bit wider here. I'll grab these teeth and adjust them and move them over, maybe a little higher. So Smile Designer's editing tools make it really easy to define your contours. Um, if you want to mirror um, some teeth across um, the midline and basically create a symmetric look, uh, you can easily do that. So let's say I wanted to get rid of the teeth on this side and take the ones from this side and mirror them across. Um, over here on the left side, we have a mirror function. And if I tap that, it creates a copy of the teeth um, and mirrors them across the midline. So this is really handy if you want to create a, a more symmetric smile. Um, now on the left side here we have other tools and we'll cover some of them in this video and some of them in other videos. Uh, bear in mind that I'm not a dentist so my design is not going to be um, exactly what you would come up with. Uh, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how to use the tool to arrive at a, a realistic smile design uh, that you can actually deliver on based on the patient situation. So if the contours that we started with are not the right contours for this patient, we can actually choose different ones. So Smile Designer comes with a library of about 12 different templates for, for tooth contours. And we have the anteriors collection from Jan Haito. And basically if I select a new contour, so let's say I want F2. Um, as soon as I click on this, it's going to morph the teeth uh, to this new shape. So down here, we have our undo redo. So if I undo that, you'll see what happened. It basically morphed the teeth right where they were into a new contour. Um, I can always draw a tooth from scratch using the tooth tool. Um, but for this case, I'm just going to stick with the default template because I like the way it looks here. Um, the shape tool and the measure tool we'll cover in a separate video. And really, in just a couple seconds, I created this smile frame, and now I want to create a simulation out of it. So when I activate the simulation tool, first thing I need to do is define the masking area where it's going to basically cut the virtual teeth so they look like they're inside the mouth. So this is a pretty standard thing that anybody can do. You're just trying to create an outline for the inner lip area. So anything beyond this outline is not going to be um, drawn in terms of the simulation. So we want to basically just go around point by point and define the contour of the lip as we want it to be cutting the simulation teeth. So it's really quick and easy. And if I click and hold on one of these points, you'll notice I have this magnifier. This is really handy in Smile Designer. Uh, whether you're working on a tablet or whether you're working on a computer, um, basically to get really precise movements and do the fine adjustments. Now to make sure that we've defined this correctly, um, we can use these sliders on the bottom here. This is a sort of a subtle lip shadow simulation effect um, that you can tweak and adjust, but also it hides these handles so you can really check um, how good is the lip contour that you've defined and do you need to adjust it. So you can always make tiny little adjustments here to see am I cutting the simulation teeth properly um, so they look like they're actually inside the mouth. Once we're happy with that, we click the check mark button and already we have something that we can show the patient. Now if we want to do some whitening, um, there's an option here on the bottom of the simulation tool. So you'll notice when I went into the simulation tool, it shows this panel on the bottom with all the different um, sub functions of simulation. So selecting the material, um, this function allows you to actually choose whether you use the library material that Smile Designer comes with, or you can use the patient's own teeth as a source for simulation. So that's a more advanced topic that we'll cover in a separate video. Um, for now, you can just basically ignore this um, and use the library material to do your simulation. Now the whitening function allows you to adjust the, the shade and the shininess of the teeth. So the first slider here lets you choose the do some whitening. So that's basically adjusting the chroma. So if we want more natural yellow looking teeth, we dial it all the way up, down and then we go up if we want whiter teeth. 
Uh, the highlights control how shiny the teeth are. So this really helps you to match the conditions in the photo. If you took a photo with your iPad, for instance, and there's no flash, you'll probably want to dial the highlights way down. And if you use the DSLR with the twin flashes and the, the photo's really shiny, um, you'll want to dial the highlights way up in order to have a more realistic result. Um, the last slider lets you control the exposure or value of the teeth. So this helps you to also better control it and integrate it um, with the photo and the lighting conditions in the photo. Um, so once I'm happy with that, I hit the check mark. The other thing to note is that the way the simulation works is it takes a picture of a tooth and it cuts it to the contour that we've designed. So over here in the layer editor, you'll see we have our design, our photo, and our guides, but we also have a simulation layer. If I bring back the design layer, you can see what's going on here. We're basically cutting the picture of the tooth to the line that we designed. And sometimes we might need to adjust this. So while we're in the simulation tool, we can actually select a tooth and we can adjust the picture under the tooth which is getting cut so we can make sure that it goes beyond the boundary of the line just barely and that way it'll cut the tooth to the contour that we designed and actually look correct so usually you don't need to worry about this but if uh, your tooth looks weird um, that's a good thing to check and then we turn the design layer off so we just look at the simulation teeth uh, the other thing we can do in a reduction case is basically use the smudge tool to shorten teeth in the photo. Now this is only useful if you've taken the photo with uh, the teeth slightly apart. If the mouth is closed when the patient is smiling, um, you can't really use the smudge tool because you're just going to smudge tooth color. You really need some color from the tongue or the interior of the mouth. And all I'm doing is basically clicking and dragging the color up towards and behind the simulation teeth. And sometimes you might accidentally grab some tooth color so we can undo and try it again and start higher. And we just drag towards the center of the tooth and we're pushing the pixels back behind the simulation. So we can do that on the incisal edge and we can also do it on the gingiva um, depending on what we need. So less is more here. Um, and sometimes you can really uh, mess things up with the smudge tool and that's why you have undo redo here. Um, but basically that's a good thing to use um, to get the patient's existing teeth out of the way so you can really see the simulation. Now if I go back to the select tool you'll notice that the teeth are still selectable and I can still make adjustments. This is really cool for when you're sitting with the patient, if they are looking at the simulation, you say, you know what, maybe these centrals are too long or too short. What do you think if we do this? What do you think if we do that? Um, you can actually make this a very interactive process um, because the tool is so simple and it's fully editable. So it's not just uh, before and after that you bake into a picture and show the patient, you can do that, but you can also show it to them live and actually make changes based on their feedback. So if we toggle the simulation layer off and on, we have sort of a before and after that we can show them. This is how you are now. This is the proposal. If we want to save out a picture, um, we would basically click on this navigation menu button and over here you see all the steps we went through and this is our way to get back to the case gallery as well. Um, but the next step is export. So we can click here to go to export or we can click on the button at the top right to go to the export step. And this is our export area and you can export a single panel view or you can export these split panel views. So if I click on the bottom button here, it's going to do a side by side. And I'm just going to zoom it to have the view that I want for this particular patient. And I have our zoom buttons over here, or you can use the trackpad to zoom in and out. And basically everything inside this white uh, border is what's going to be saved out in your picture. On the bottom left here, there's a pop-up that lets you choose the aspect ratio of the picture that you're saving. So if you wanted to save, for instance, um, something to post to Instagram, you might want to use a square one. 
if you're including it in a keynote or PowerPoint presentation, uh, you might want to choose uh, a proportion that matches your slide, um, or you can just leave it as 16 by 9. Um, on the bottom right here, you can choose your format, JPEG, PNG, and you can choose the export pixel dimensions. So you can export big, smaller, smaller, smallest, um, depending on your needs. So you'll notice uh, these layer icons at the top left of each panel. Um, when I click on them, they have a layer pop-up that lets me control the content that's visible on each side. So you can actually customize this uh, export to show whatever content you want on each side. So you might export some measurements, uh, which we haven't covered in this video. Um, you might export different things depending on who the image is for. This is a before and after that we're saving out. So we have our photo by itself on the left side and we have our photo plus the simulation on the right side. And when I'm ready to save, I basically hit the save button Let's go into our tutorial case and we'll say before and after, and that's it. We can show it to the patient in the app or we can show them the picture, it's up to you. So hopefully this is something that you can integrate into your workflow and do it for a lot of cases and that's really how you're going to get uh, the most benefit. Let's go back to the beginning and do this case again without talking just so you can see how fast and easy this workflow is once you get the hang of it. That's it, and we're done. Now the more advanced topics are going to be covered in other videos, um, and we'll show you how you can take your smile design and actually link it to your treatment, whether that involves uh, guiding a wax up using measurements or using our 3D Connect feature to overlay your smile design um, on top of any CAD CAM or um, orthodontic software and actually use it to guide your treatment planning. So that information will be covered in more advanced videos. Um, for now, we're gonna stop there. And uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can email support at tastytech.ca with any questions and we'll be happy to help you. Thanks for watching.